But you know I'd go to sleep and leave the lights on From the time I was a little kid, my, brother, uh, my brother's girlfriend had bought a guitar for his brother for Christmas when I was about eight years old. And she was storing it our, at our house, so he didn't know about it. And he left it in the living room, and I would sneak into the living room and try and play it. The last song I'll ever sing for you. A few years later, maybe when we first got to Canada, my cousin was playing guitar in a little kind of Kingston Trio kind of group. And I just loved, I loved the sound of the acoustic guitar. It was just like, oh, I love that sound. I'd like to do that, you know. And then Ricky Nelson, watching him at the end of the, the, the Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet play his guitar, which was a Martin D28 guitar. Um, and then, of course, you know, all the early folky people, you know, people like Bob Dylan, Buffy St. Marie, of course, the Beatles and the Everly Brothers, Buddy Holly, all that stuff. And so eventually, you know, it's like my brother got a $12 guitar from Richmond's Trading Post, church on Church Street. And the strings were, at, at, honestly, this far away from, uh, from, and I was trying to play it. I, I was trying to play, I was trying to press the strings down, and my fingers would start to bleed. I thought, well, these, these guitar players must be so tough. <laughs> you know, I had no idea. You know, it's like until... Anyway, I st you know, it was like I... Uh, he got this $12 guitar, and I, f I figured out that... I could play anything on one string. I couldn't figure out how to, how to do stuff with the other strings. And then I was... I had a job at the North York Public Library at Don Mills and Lawrence. I was a page. I was in high school. I was getting paid 50 cents an hour. And I was filing away books. I was putting books away. And, I, and I, the Folk Singer's Guitar Guide by, I think it was Jerry Silverman, was the author. I picked up the book and go, geez, you know, I should take this home. And, you know, it showed you how to show pictures of the guitar chords, how to tune to the guitar. Had songs like This Land Is Your Land in it. And so then I just. I just started to play. I, I'd be up in my bedroom and I, I'd find like a, I could play a G chord and then I figure, I found like this, this is a little bit out of tune. I found this change where it was like. Okay, so it's 1964. Um, sadly, my brother, John, gets killed by a drunk driver. I was about 16 or something like that, I'm thinking. And he had an insurance policy and somehow I ended up getting like $600. And I went and I bought this Gibson J45 guitar and I started playing guitar and I started playing in uh, a folk group called the Downwinds in my high school at Winston Churchill Collegiate in Scarborough. There was a, a Christmas show at the high school, and we were part of the Christmas show. I guess we did a couple of songs or something. Also on that Christmas show was a group. Now this group had Prakash John playing bass. Prakash John, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's been with a, with a band called the Lincolns. Previously he's, played, previously, he's played with Parliament and Funkadelic and with Alice Cooper. Phenomenal history. The, dr the drummer was a guy by the name of Larry Evoy. Now Larry Evoy had, was, had been playing in a group with Prakash called the Press Gang. And he, he came in as a last minute replacement for Carson Lindsay, who, they w who was going to be playing drums, but the, the vice principal wouldn't let him play drums because his hair was probably down to about here. <laughs> Right? They wouldn't let him play drums because his hair was down to here and Larry's was, was a little bit shorter. And he was from a different high school, but they let Larry play. The guy playing piano in that band was Pat Riccio Jr. Pat Riccio Jr., his father was a famous uh, jazz musician. And Pat Riccio Jr. became Ann Murray's music director for a time. He's a great, incredible keyboard, keyboard player. Anyway, that was the first time I met Larry Evoy. Um, Shortly after that, the Downwinds became a folk rock group. I got an electric 
Gibson ES3512 string guitar. And we ended up doing an audition at the Riverboat in Yorkville to play at the Mariposa Folk Festival. Danny Marks, who was the original lead guitar player for Edward Bear, um, asked me if I would come on the Edward Bear shows. They, they would mostly do, were doing high school gigs, high school dances all around Ontario. And they wanted me to play like a 20 minute to a half an hour set in between their two sets. And um, I was basically a singer songwriter doing folky stuff, you know. And um, so I started doing that and that was great. By June of that year, Danny Marks decided he wanted to join, he wanted to play heavier music. And so he decided he wanted to leave the band. And Larry asked me to join the band. And then Danny taught me the guitar parts of the earlier songs. And then I taught Larry and Paul, as Paul Weldon and Larry Ebor, some of my songs. So, um, and off we went. And we continued playing high school dances. Every once in a while we'd play with somebody like Rush. Um, I think they opened for us somewhere in southwestern Ontario. Or at least they were on before us. A winter storm coming in from the prairies Walking Sault Ste. Marie You're right here, arms around me You're right here while you're 2,000 miles away My first child, Becky, was born uh, December 18th, 1975. And by that time, uh, just previous to that time, I'd basically been playing, playing in bars. Um, I'd left the band in 1974, somewhere down the line, somewhere around, ap ap somewhere down around April 1974. What question? In 1974, I think Larry and I just had a dispute. Well, he, he decided he wanted to have more, like, more control over the direction of the band. And he was the leader of the band, and he was certainly mostly responsible for the, more responsible for the success of the band than anybody else. And um, he deserved to be compensated more than he was getting compensated. And so it just there was a disagreement over the compensation and you know, how much say I would have in the direction of the band. Uh, sadly, my wife, uh, Elise, um, had very severe multiple sclerosis and she died uh, in 1989. And uh, I think probably about, what? 1995, I think I, I started playing seniors' homes, and uh, I found that very enjoyable. I love to do music of Bing Crosby, Judy Garland, Frank Sinatra, and I, you know, all the old folk songs and things like that. And then um, I decided to do. I, so I'd seen people playing in the subway. I thought, well, that looks like fun. I think I could try that. So I auditioned in 1997. And I started playing down here, and then I liked it a lot. It was like, this is great. <laughs> I really liked it, and I really liked the people. It was like, I can come, come whenever I want. I can leave whenever I want. I can play any song that I want to play. If I don't want to play that song, if somebody asks me for a song and I don't want to play it, I don't play it, you know. If I, but mostly, I would always play it if I knew what I would play. All along the watchtower, princess kept the view. All the women came and went, barefoot servants too. The, the main thing is connecting. It's like connecting with the people. It's like if you're not connecting with them, then it's like there's nothing happening. It's like you, you want to have something happening. Connection is very brief though, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes, it's, sometimes it can just be for, for a few seconds. It's like where you just, you know that you contacted that person. And then, you know, maybe they'll come up to you like, six months later and they'll say, and this happened, you know, I was having an incredibly bad day and I was walking by and you were singing that Simon and Garfunkel song, Feeling Groovy. And you sang it so nicely and it just suddenly touched me 
and suddenly I started feeling okay. And I just wanted to come and thank you because you just changed my, the, my, my day. It made me feel so good that time. So then, you moved too fast. You got to make the morning last. Just kicking down the cobblestones. Looking fun and feeling groovy. The main thing about being a musician in the subway is that you're not here to make the money. You're here to connect with the people and give them a better day. And if you do that, it doesn't matter how much you make. It's like, it's like you, feel, you feel very um, satisfied that you did your job. Thinking of you down in Mexico, feeling free as the air. But here I am, stuck in the city, still going nowhere. No, I'd go to sleep and leave the lights on Hoping you'd come by and know that I was home Still awake, but two years go by and still my lights on This is hard for me to say, but it's all that I can take It's the last song I'll ever sing for you it's the last time that I'll tell you just how much I really care. It's the last song I'll ever write for you. You come looking for the light, and it won't be there. But I love you. Oh, yes, I do.